Whenever I start working on a new player controller, I always set up a little sandbox environment to test in. It will have the usual slopes, stairs, and terrain, but over time I've added a few additional challenges that I've come across. These really put the controller to the test, and I want to share three of these with you today. The first will be the right angle flip to test if the player can walk on any angle. Then we'll look at the gravity well to see if the controller can handle the inside of a loop. And finally, we'll have a look at moving platforms that do not require parenting the controller. Let's get into it. I just want to point out two things about the controller that I'm working on, and not even specific to the controller, but just on my hero character. I have gravity turned off and I have frozen all the rotations on the rigid body. Now I have a collider on here as well and that's important for all of the obstacles, but those are really the only essential things that you need to make this work. So the inner workings of the controller don't matter. These obstacles are meant to work with rigid bodies, colliders and transforms. So let's start with the first effect here. We've got a new class, I'm going to call it right angle flip. And this needs one main method that I'm just going to call flip direction. This is going to take in the new up direction and the transform of our player. First, let's figure out the angle that's between the new up direction and the up of the transform. Now we could set a very small threshold to say that if it's within this small amount, then we're not going to do anything because we're basically already there. So in that case, let's just return early. Otherwise, let's calculate the rotation that will turn the player's current up direction into the new up direction. Once we're done that, we can apply the calculated rotation to the player. So we can multiply the current rotation with the calculated rotation difference to get the final rotation. Okay, now to pull this all together, I'm gonna to add one more method on trigger enter. And I'm gonna add a little constraint to it because I want all the things coming into this uh, particular method to have a rigid body and a collider. Now, all colliders in Unity have a property called attached rigid body, and this is automatically populated by Unity as long as there's a rigid body on the object or on one of its parents. So what we can do here is say, as long as that's not null, we know that there's a rigid body and a collider on this object that just came into the trigger, then we're going to flip the direction and we can use the transform forward of this game object. And then we'll pass in the transform of, in this case, it would be our player, but it could be any object that comes in there that satisfies these criteria. So this is pretty straightforward. Why don't we go try it out? So over here in Unity, I've set up a wall over on the right side of my scene and it has a little ramp on it. And inside the ramp is a object that I've called Gravity Flipper. This just has our box collider, which is marked as a trigger. And it has the script that we just wrote on it. So there's two of these. One should flip me up onto the wall and the other one should bring me back down. So I'm just going to run over here quickly. My player doesn't have anything special on it other than its controller and a collider and a rigid body. And here we are up on the wall. So that's looking pretty good. Um, if I come back down the ramp here, it should flip me again in the forward direction of that transform. And yeah, it does indeed turn me right side up again. So this is working pretty good. I would definitely say working as intended. Why don't we move on and take a look at how we can implement the gravity well effect. For the next two effects, I want to keep track of all of the rigid bodies that enter a specific trigger area. So we'll have a new class here that just keeps a list of all the rigid bodies that have come in. And we can make this publicly accessible with an I read only list. This is going to be an extremely simple class. All we need to do here is on trigger enter. As long as there is a rigid body attached to this collider, let's add it to our list. And we're going to do exactly the opposite for on trigger exit. And that's it. Now we'll be able to keep track of who's gone into the gravity well, and we'll be able to use this for our moving platforms later on as well. Okay, slightly more complicated, but not by much, our gravity well. First of all, let's require a component of type trigger area to make sure that we always have that. We can keep that in a private variable here. And the first thing we can do is create a start method and actually get components so that we have that populated. Now, because all the movement is going to be done on rigid bodies, we're going to handle this in fixed update. We're going to iterate over every single rigid body that's inside the trigger area. So let's get a reference to each of them one by one. First, let's calculate the vector that goes between the player and the very center of the gravity well. I'm going to use the fast script reload asset here and just turn on debug lines one by one. And I'll, I'll probably draw on the screen here too so I can kind of show what the math is doing. So first we want the direction between the player and the center of the gravity well, which is right where the gizmo is. And I'll draw that with a red line. Then we're going to project this direction onto the forward direction of the gravity well. 
So projection is a way to collapse a vector onto another vector to find where the first vector would end if it moved in the direction of the second. So I'll draw a blue line here to indicate that vector. So now we've got a vector that represents how much of the direction to the rigid body value lies along the transform dot forward direction. Next, if we take the transform dot position of the gravity well and add it to this vector, we'll get the exact point which will be up for our character. So now that we have this point, we can actually calculate the direction to the center from our rigid body just by subtracting the rigid body's transform position from the center. And I'll draw that in yellow. Apologies if that little window is a bit small for people watching on mobile. Hopefully that conveys the idea of what we're calculating here. Now that we've got all these angles figured out, we can actually rotate the rigid body to face that up direction. And I'm going to do that in another method. I'll just scroll down to give myself a little bit of room here and add a new signature for this rotate rigid body method. And the first thing I want to do inside of here is normalize that vector that's coming in because we're going to start calculating some rotations. First of all, let's calculate the rotation between the character's transform up and the direction we actually want up to be. After that, we can get a final rotation by multiplying this difference multiplied by our current rotation. Then we can use rigid body's move rotation method to smoothly rotate to where we want to be. Just one more thing to make this all come together, and that is I'm going to add an on trigger exit method here in case the character jumps out of the well. In this case, we can do a try get component to get a reference to the rigid body. If we get one, then first of all, let's make sure that we use the rotate rigid body method to point the character straight up towards vector three dot up. But I want to do one more thing, and that's just to make sure there's no lean in the character. We can calculate the Euler angles with an X and a Z of zero. And then we can make sure that we use that move rotation method again. This is just to make sure that there's absolutely no tilt in the character at all. OK, that's all we have to do. Well, let's go make sure it works. So here in the scene, we've got a giant box collider around the gravity well, and that's for the trigger area. And then we've got a mesh collider on the actual cylinder here itself. That's how we're able to run around inside of it. And beyond that, this player controller has gravity turned off, but it has a little sensor on the bottom that lets it know if it's touching the ground or not. And the collider in this case is the mesh collider of this tube. Since here, every fixed update, we're making sure that the character is rotated so that its up direction is straight towards the center of the gravity well, its down will always be out towards one of the rounded edges. Until we jump out, of course, and then we're back to pointing straight up. So this is looking pretty good. I don't think we need to test that any further. Why don't we move on to the last piece of the puzzle, which is these moving platforms here. And uh, it's just a little bit more code than these first two. Let's start this class by making sure that we've got a trigger area associated with every platform. Now, every platform is going to need a few properties that we'll want to adjust. One of them is going to be speed, how fast it moves around, a wait time, how long it's going to pause at each waypoint that it reaches, a Boolean, maybe we want to reverse the direction of it. And then, of course, we'll have a list of waypoints that it could go through. And on some cases, that'll just be two, but, you know, might want three or four sometimes. Beyond that, we're going to need some private variables. We we'll want a Boolean that'll tell us, are we waiting or not? We're going to want to keep track of which waypoint we're at, and we could probably record which transform that is as well. And finally, we're also going to need some references to the trigger area and the rigid body of this moving platform. Every moving platform will have a rigid body. So let's make a start method. And first of all, let's get references to the other components here. So let's get a reference to the rigid body, a reference to the trigger area, for the rigid body on the moving platform, I want to freeze the rotation. I don't want to use gravity and I want to make sure that is kinematic is set to true. Next, let's maybe give a little warning just in case uh, there are no waypoints. Might as well log something out to the console for that. But if there are, then we might as well choose the first one. So our index will start at zero and so we can grab that current waypoint and set it. That's really all the setup we have to do here. So I'm going to collapse up this start method and we can start adding some more methods here, starting by moving the platform. So when we're thinking about moving a platform, let's have a guard clause here. First of all, let's make sure there actually are waypoints and that we're not waiting. If either of those are true, let's bail out early. Otherwise, let's calculate the vector to the next waypoint. Once we've got that done, we can calculate the normalized movement vector for this frame. So we'll take our movement speed times time dot delta time. That'll give us how far we want to move right now. 
Then we should check to see if the remaining distance is smaller or equal to this frame's movement, or if there's no movement for this frame, meaning we're already there. If so, then we can move directly to the waypoint and we'll update to the next waypoint. We can calculate what the next waypoint is going to be in another method. Now, supposing that wasn't true and we actually do have to move, all we have to do here is have an else condition and just moves a little bit closer to that waypoint we're headed towards. Now, finally, where the magic is going to happen here is we're going to iterate over all the rigid bodies that are in the trigger area, and we're going to adjust their position by this same movement amount. So let's have a for loop similar to what we've been doing before. We'll grab the first rigid body out of here, and we'll just use the rigid body's move position method to adjust the rigid body's position by that movement amount. And we'll do that for every rigid body that's registered in the trigger area. So now we just need a few little helper methods, really. We need a method to update this waypoint. So if we're reversing the direction, let's reverse our current waypoint index by negative one, and otherwise we'll increase it by a positive one. Then what we can do is say, well, if our current count is greater than the number of waypoints that we have, we need to wrap it around. So let's set it back to zero. And then we need to do the inverse of that because if we're going backwards and we suddenly have a negative number, a negative index, then we actually want to go to the end of the list, which is the count minus one. Now, this is a little bit verbose and we could actually write this in one line. I'm just gonna comment these out and let's do an improvement here. We could actually just do this with the modulus operator if we just add waypoints.count to the index every time. That'll make sure that we always have a positive number. The modulus operator will make sure that we get the correct index. Then we can use the updated index to set the correct transform for our current waypoint. On top of that, since we've now arrived at a waypoint and we're just about ready to go to the next one, we are going to start waiting. So let's turn that Boolean flag on. Okay, we're almost done. Let's just get rid of this commented out code so we've got a nice clean method here. I'm going to write two coroutines here to move these platforms around and to make them wait. So the first one will be to actually move them. I want the movement to happen after every fixed update. So I'm going to make a new method here. I'm just going to call it late fixed update. And what we want to do here is wait for the fixed update to finish. I'll make an infinite loop here. At the start of every iteration, we'll yield return that wait for fixed update and then we'll call our move platform method. Now, I don't really like using the new keyword inside of a coroutine. I'm just gonna pull that up to be a member variable, I think, for now. And actually, we can probably make a little improvement to this later on. But let's keep going. We've got to make a coroutine for our wait method. So this method here, let's just call it wait routine. We're going to want to wait for however long we had defined that wait time to be. This non-allocating get wait for seconds is part of the Unity utils library. I'll put a link for that in the description. And again, here we can just make an infinite loop and we can say, if we are waiting, let's yield return for whatever that duration was. And at the end of that, we'll turn off the is waiting flag. If we never make it into that logic block, let's just yield return null. Okay, let's expand out that start method again, because at the end of the start method, we can just start both of these coroutines. And that's it. Let's jump back over to Unity and see how these are set up. So if we take a look at each of these moving platforms, you'll notice that they have two colliders on them. The first one is a box collider that's on the bottom. That's what we stand on. And the other one is a trigger area. It's just a trigger collider that sits right above. So as soon as anything with a rigid body and a collider is going to jump on there, the trigger will go off. They'll get added to the trigger area and they'll get carried along with the platform. Now you might notice in the inspector, I've given the second box collider a special name. And that's because I'm using a very cool tool from the asset store which I will link in the description. Extremely useful when you have multiple components on a game object of the same type and you want to give them unique names. Okay, why don't we hit play and test out these moving platforms? So here we go. Make sure the coroutines are running. Looks good. Hop on. I should be in the trigger area. I can move around on the platform. Let's get on to this other one. Now, if I jump, I'll be out of the trigger area and it stops carrying me until I come back down again can jump off of it no problem. Let's jump back on this one when it comes back again. Yeah, okay. This all looks great. 
So just a couple reminders from earlier in the video. If you're building your own player controller and you really want to take control of gravity and be able to walk on walls and everything, you have to make sure to turn off use gravity on your rigid body and start handling these things by yourself. Now, there's not a lot of gravity going on here at all. The only time gravity is being applied to this particular player controller is when I'm airborne in order to pull me back down in the down direction of the character, like right there. So that's really it. Other than that, it's just getting carried around because it's collided with something and the ground detector knows where it is, or it's in a trigger area. And so the rigid body is getting updated with the movement of the platform and so on. So for the most part, these components that you see in the scene are independent of the player controller. So they can work with almost anything. Now, that being said, everybody's at different stages in their programming journey. And I realize that building a player controller from scratch might be beyond what some of you are able to do all by yourself. But I do have a video planned about building an advanced player controller similar to the one that you see here. And that'll be coming in August. So make sure that you hit the notification bell if you wanna catch that one. I was thinking about doing one more optimization and I think we have time for this and that is let's make a static wait for class because you know I don't want to be calling this new wait for fixed update all the time let's have a static one let's store it let's have a public static property that'll let us get that from the static class you know we could do this for any of these types like wait for end of frame now I realize that Unity's optimized this quite a bit and this probably isn't a huge performance boost but you know what? It'll make the code more readable. Down here on line 62, let's just use that static property. And then on line 27, I'll comment that out, but you know, really it just needs to be removed. So I think the uh, wait for class might make a good addition to the Unity Utilities Library, along with some other suggestions that some of you have made on Discord. So I think I'm gonna be making an update to that probably this week or the week after. Maybe we'll bump the version number on that one as well. So that's all I've got for you today. Make sure to hit that notification bell if you don't wanna miss the video about player controllers in a couple weeks. Hit the like button if you learned something new today. Click on one of these images on your screen if you're not tired of the channel yet. And of course, as always, you're welcome to join the community on Discord. Maybe I'll see you there.